Got it. All right. All right. This, All right. This episode is about Virgil Abloh, um, everything that he was able to do and, and how it impacted all of us. Um, him being from Chicago, him being African, uh, and him being able to just be a trailblazer and, and break through. You know, um, a lot of the collaborations um, were crazy, and he was just able to keep going and just push through from doing album covers to sneakers to T-shirts. And him able to be a giant where he's with Louis Vuitton, but at the same time, he's doing collaborations with the small up and comer guy who is able to grow because he's reaching down. Um, he was a master in that sense and was so business savvy that, uh, you know, some things I didn't really care for, but it took me a while to understand fashion wise that it was just making him bigger and bigger and bigger um and it was just something dope to watch and be you know a part of and, and have to buy in i remember i actually bought a pair of the louis vuitton sneakers the red and black and gray uh jordan colorway i mean the yeah. wolves are jordan colorway and oh, man, it was just like you know what i'm saying these are 13 1400 sneakers but i just had to have <laughs> something of the Louis Vuitton Virgil era. Uh, so I think, uh, man, will we see another? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But he definitely became a legend in such a short amount of time. It's crazy. Um, I'm pretty sure going through and working in Paris and it was, was he dealt with a lot of like, you know, racism and, and things that we can't even understand but he was still out here able to be number one and they and these huge giants knew that they needed him because he was just a selling maven you know what i'm saying um That's true. so yeah man let's 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 go ahead and start off you know what i'm saying uh what were some of the yeah that you i'm thought? sorry go ahead no go ahead yeah w one of the things i like to just talk about him is the different mediums of art he touched you know um from doing like set design with kanye you know a lot of the shows um uh, to even like graffiti and as you said he, he became such a business mogul from touching so many pulling from so many different sources you know may it be you know swedish culture or you know streetwear culture in america or skateboarding or you know some of the stuff that he did was very gaudy you know like uh but as you said, it kind of grew on me as well. I kind of understood what he was doing. Um, he couldn't be so subtle with his designs to, to kind of open up a, a new demographic of people. So, you know, like the all over uh, you know, Damier print off the Air Forces, you know, that, that looks like something you would see like at the flea market back in the days, you know? Yeah. But that, uh, it, it worked though, you know, it was yeah. a hit. So like, yeah. That, that's definitely one thing that uh, stands out to me is this his his uh, ability to move within different spaces. Yeah, still the, hit. You know? The shock value was definitely there. Um, you know, it was it was one of his uh, sayings or something that he really said was he wanted to be able to make something for the seventeen year old self in him, and I definitely saw that with all of the pieces and everything he pulled from be it skateboarding or um a lot of the things that you know he knew would impact him as a 17 year old uh which influenced the youth you know what i mean yeah um yeah. so you can't yeah I, I, like um i think when you talk about skateboarding i think about like you know the early 2000s and like the css magazines and you know seeing the etnies and the the, the beginning of Nike SB, you know, like 2001 when they came in orange boxes. So like, I'm sure Virgil remembers that. And, you know, I think even like the Long Vaughn shoes, those remind me a lot of the, the um, like the ESs, the, some of the Etnies from that time. Yeah. You know, that chunky shoe. And like, he kind of popularized that Long Vaughn shoe. He's like the first person I really saw putting it in on Front Street, you know? So, yeah. No, that's so true. That, the, and then yeah. the, um, the, 
I, I think even skateboarding, like the, the way he, uh, the tailoring of some of the pants that you would see, absolutely, you know, the bagginess, but still had like a certain cut, I thought was really awesome because it was, yeah. oh, I can wear these pants with a sneaker and wear these pants with, you know, a hoodie. And these are Louis Vuitton um, pants. So I thought that was really cool how he was able to still be high end and converge it to uh, a streetwear aesthetic. You know what I'm saying? Um, man, he did so many things in so little time. It's so, it's, it's, it's crazy to think about. Like, I don't even know where to start as far as like how business savvy and how fast he was moving when he would do yeah. things and would be collaborating with ASAP and then collaborating with Chief Keith and then collaborating with, you know, Nike uh, and then um, putting it in stores that we were kind of like, oh, I don't know about that. But business wise, it just made so much sense. Um, and to, 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 to grow his, to, his arms were so long. You know what I'm saying? Like, even oh, yeah. now you see about, you think about all of the people that have benefited from those collaborations, be it Matthew of Alix, you know what I'm saying? Or uh, oh, yeah. uh, Givenchy or uh, Samuel Ross, you know what I'm saying? Who was able, who he was able to do the APC stuff with and Kanye. Um, <clears throat> I just thought it was really awesome. Uh, Drake. You know what I mean? Just designing like airplanes and like, it was just- Everywhere. Nothing went untouched, you know what I'm saying? Like it was always like, damn, what the, what is he gonna do next? You know what I mean? So I think um, how he was able to do it and how he was able to just push through and, str and, and be so strong will when people would kind of, you know, sneak this or, you know what I'm saying? He would have naysayers and how he would just push through and just continue to just thrive and just show people that he's not done yet. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Even, even uh, sadly, as he's passed away, you can still see his designs uh, so strong in Louis Vuitton. And um, I, just, I just marvel at it, man. I really do because, man, it was, it, it, it was crazy, you know? Uh, collaborating with Beast Roy, collaborating with all these smaller guys uh Tremaine um and just putting these guys on a pedestal to now where these guys have it was almost like when if Jay-Z or when Drake does a track with that rapper that is on exactly the, you know what I'm exactly. saying it's like yo I'll like, go ahead and and, and 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 put something on your track it, he, it was it, it, or you know what I'm saying I'm gonna go ahead and collaborate with you and now you're on a platform that you didn't even know that you could be out, be on. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. That that's a perfect comparison. Um, you know, even like bringing smaller brands to light, like you said, and, and even certain publications. If he was in, like, you're the you're the creative director of Louis, but you're in Sneeze magazine. You know, like that that was impressive to me. Like you said, just bringing light to some of these smaller brands. Um, you know, he, he was always for that, just bringing other people up, and you know. I just had a personal question for you. What are, what are some of your favorite pieces from him, you know, during his, his time at Louis or Nike or whatever he's done? What are some of your favorites? You know, I, I, I love so much from him. I loved <laughs> the bounciness and the, 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 the cloth and the thickness of the off-white t-shirt. You know what I'm saying? Okay, absolutely. Like, I, love, I love the tailoring in the Louis Vuitton pants. I loved uh, the Jordan collaborations. Uh, how he was able oh, yeah. to strip it down and strip it and take it and, 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 and it goes so many different ways. Um, I loved um, his collaborations with uh, a lot of these smaller brands that are walking around New York or walking around Atlanta or walking around just different parts of the U.S. and in and, and London, um, the kids that he would just collaborate with. Like, I thought that was so dope when he would do that and just put them up and bring them up and say, hey, man, you guys want to help me out with a collection that I'm going to, that's going to be in, within the Louis Vuitton, you know, space. Uh, Absolutely. Man, I, there was so many things that I was after. 
<laughs> that I wasn't able to get, that I was able to get, you know. Um, yeah, I, I, I like I like the uh, I like the iris, iridescent uh, kind of like monogram he did those bags and yeah. some of the jewelry that okay. that was a that was a crazy uh, collection. Yeah. yeah, some of the rings and jewelry he did with Louis, for Louis Vuitton was was disgusting, man. Yeah. He would just be wearing it effortlessly. <laughs> oh my yeah. god, I'm still <laughs> after some of those rings. Like they would just be for sure. They would be colorful and so unique. I'd just be like, oh my gosh, man. What? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, sure. but, uh, yeah, he's 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 definitely man. It's, it's it's crazy how much he was able to do. You know what I'm saying? And then his taste in music, like how he started to DJ, and just how he was, exactly. like, you know what I'm saying? Have such this wide range of music. You know, there wasn't a lot of people. There wasn't a lot of black people besides Black Coffee and a few other guys that I can name or think of that were in that house house music wave in space you know what i'm saying so i know he was tapped in and, and he was really on to something even with that you know um i think uh how he was able to just like let, uh help help hair and preston out and really just get his brand up and going you know that i think they're getting their stuff made uh manufactured in milan and man that tailoring was just it's just awesome it's always been so yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, so his 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 footprints are left in so many different places in so many different ways. You know, I'm actually looking forward to seeing what these guys do next now. You know what I'm saying? Just because I know yeah. they have uh, they have pieces of Virgil in them. You know what I mean? So. I always thought that was dope. How he was able, to, how he was always able to go back to Chicago, and just like you know tap in and check in, and you know what I'm saying. Um, yeah, man. I mean, he was everywhere, bro. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, and like like you mentioned about the uh, Milan tailoring I, when I was you know just looking up some of the leaks and Matthew Williams, he does a lot of his stuff in, in Italy and Milan, and you know. He has that tailoring and he's pulling from these sources and you know these outliers and you know he's able to you know even him working with Montclair, I believe their their headquarters are in uh, Italy as well. So yeah. Yeah. Good um, stuff there, man. That imprint's always there, you know, and, and the doors that he opened, especially for other creative designers and the whole Ben Trail, you know, you think about it now, those guys who are DJing, you know, rocking the hats with the <laughs> With the you know hamper sign or whatever, those guys are creative directors of big houses, and they're they're meeting with Anna Wintour and they're doing all these things. It's 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 mind blowing, you know, how much they were able to do in such a short time. So yeah, and and then how he would always be like, yo, I, I'm gonna go do a conversation and have a talk in a think tank at Columbia, and allow exactly. kids to just come up and just see exactly what I'm doing and how I was able to change, go from architecture. Uh, and utilize that into clothing design and utilize that into CD design or whatever I'm doing. Um, you know, it was like everybody needed a piece of him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember watching the NBA uh, championship games and the case was Louis Vuitton by Virgil. Yeah. And you're just like, damn. Wow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I remember that. That was... Uh... That was the one that was in the bubble, right? Yeah. Was, you're just, yeah, yeah. You're like, Sheesh. That was crazy. You know what I'm saying? So I think his impact, uh, man, we could have, we gotta, we, we probably gonna have to do a part two because if we if we break sure. down exactly where his footprints are and like how much he did in such a short span of time, whew, you know, um, he opened the doors for sure. He opened the doors to allow these brands to now look at a lot of guys of color uh, and a lot of guys that don't have that formal training to showcase, okay, wait, these guys can not only brand and design, these guys can sell. You know what I mean? Uh, I want to say Off-White and when he when he was with Louis Vuitton, they that was some of the top brands in the world. Absolutely. You know? Like I would yeah. like I would go back to Nairobi and visit, and people were aware of Off White 
and they couldn't get it, but they were aware, like, no, 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 you're coming from the States. Yo, can you, you got some of that off white? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's global. <laughs> even the way he would use uh, social media and Instagram was ahead. He would have yeah. like three, four, five different pages of just him getting his ideas out. Be it if he's, if he's studying, if he's working with furniture, if he's working on women's gowns, women's shoes, you know what I'm saying? Like any idea that he wanted to get out, he would just get it out and you would come into this wave where he would just, man, I'm just gonna keep giving, keep giving you pieces, keep giving you, uh, you know, uh, imagery and keep giving you uh, things to look at and check for, visually stimulating us, uh, knowing that Louis, knowing that Louis Vuitton and knowing that Instagram is, you know, one of the main things that everybody is looking at right now as far as TV, and he just knew how to just work it. Like, I think his, I don't know what he was better at, branding, business, or designing. I literally do not know what he was, I don't know what he was better at, but I just know he was a monster. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah and all three. <laughs> yeah, just the guerrilla marketing in your face, you know? And, 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 you know, working for such a prestigious house like that. And, like, I, I recall me and you talking about, uh, you know, kind of like we see these high-end collabs uh, with, like, Balenciaga and Gucci or, you know, yeah. is it, or just there's more and more co- popping up. But, you know, him blending that streetwear in the high-end, you know what I mean? Now, now these large prestigious fashion houses are taking a look at the streets. They're looking at you know, the kids, the culture. And, you, and you're seeing that in their, in their uh, collections, yeah. you know? And you never really saw that before, <laughs> you know? So it's crazy. Like, I would say maybe, you know, with Mark Jacobs, yeah, he would take from the streets and pull from Pharrell or, you know, Little Kim or whomever during his shows. But, you know, it was never really on this level where they've taken such a, you know, a sharp he was, look. He was the first one that showed us, like, you don't have to be exclusive to be cool. You can exactly. do everything, you can give everything because he had so much going on. You know what I'm saying? Some things just organically you're gonna miss and some things you're gonna like really be a part of. Like that's the one thing like I look at a lot of these brands that used to be, you know, uh, try to be very exclusive. They understood uh, once he came into the game business-wise it makes sense for you to just show it and get it out, you know? Do, do you mean in terms of like availability or do you mean like, when you say exclusive, do you mean like numbered pieces like, or just like hard, like boutiques that are just hard to get to, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, so I think what one thing that, we, that we're seeing right now is social media has kind of made the world smaller, right? Mm-hmm. But, yeah. But even though the world is smaller, you still you're still not able to connect with everybody. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's just worlds where it's just not as developed as like Kenya is just not as developed as 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 the U.S. But if you have social media, you can kind of get a glance and see what's going on. So he knew he knew like yo if I can if I just if I just drop, 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 drop different visuals, you know what I mean? And you come into my way somehow, some way by liking a photo or by commenting or whatever, by following me, following one of my pages, uh, it's going to draw more attention towards me and it's going to draw more attention towards the business. You know, at the end of the day, these guys are a business. They got to make money. So he was, he was smart in that understanding that, you can still release, you know, visuals or pieces, um, but that doesn't mean that it's going to connect to everybody, but you still have to release and you still have to go. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I wasn't the biggest fan of the Ben Trill, but I was, I was, I knew what was going on. I was aware right, of it. Right. Yeah. Which, yeah. Which, which in hindsight kept me waiting for the next thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like everything yeah. was a moment. Everything made he made a moment. I remember when he opened up the store in on Mercer and it was at first I was like, oh shit, I gotta go check this store out. I gotta go check the store out, right? And then you yeah. go to the store and it's not like something 
masterful and crazy, but it's there and you're like, yo, I gotta go check it out. I gotta go see what's going on. I gotta go see what's new. I gotta go see what, what's going on here and off-white, you know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. So, and it would be crazy out there. Like you just walk up and I remember walking up and seeing, like Rich the Kid going in or just like, you know what I'm saying? Certain, certain guys that are, you know, rappers or celebrities or whoever you may be having to just yep. pop in and just see what, what's the new aesthetic and what's the new wave, you know what I mean? I remember people that wanted to work there and it just, you know what I'm saying? Just needed to work there. You know what I'm saying? Just, I needed to be, you know what I'm saying? Alone <laughs> somehow, like he brings yeah. that praise, you know what I'm saying? And he learned how to bring that, like, that appeal. Uh, I almost want to say from just, I don't know, from Kanye almost, you know what I mean? Everybody wanted a piece of him, like he said, like, you know, like designing what, you know, he designed Haley Bieber's wedding dress, and just, all these celebrities were just, you know, on a piece of version. Oh man, they were clamoring on him. They were clamoring because he was like, so, <laughs> he, he had the know. sauce and he knew it. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was one of those sure. like, yeah, I, I know I got the sauce. So let me go yeah. ahead and spread it out and let me go ahead and show people. Like, I thought that was crazy. And I thought people didn't even see that when he uh, designed Drake's plane. I was like, yo, did people peep this? Like, right. how crazy right. that is? You know what I'm crazy. saying? Like, yeah, the Jordan off white, man, you know, we could definitely talk about that. And, you know, that, oh that was, that was, that was a, a moment oh gosh, bro, <laughs> like, tan, and then everything that came afterward, you know, the, the, that the, original 10, the Jordan one. Yeah. The Jordan like, one, oh. oh my gosh. Bro. You know how crazy <laughs> it was in New York? If you yeah. had a pair of those Jordan ones, bro. What? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that was the one. Gosh, man. Like, he constructed a Jordan uh, yeah. to make it high end. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> I personally like the Chicago ones the most, you know. Yeah. But I mean, the other, the other flavors are cool too. <laughs> yeah. I like, I mean, I like the Chicago one and I like the all white one. Oh, uh, yeah. Those yeah. Are cool. <laughs> the all white one was crazy and you know what was so dope it was almost like he knew that yo this shoe is gonna look better when it's a little beat yeah it looks better with character worn you know in man? like For he sure. was like yo like the, the 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 guy on the street level that's walking around with this shoe it's gonna look better beat because i've seen the jordan the jordan colorway when it's like a little beat in and it has, it definitely has a different, different feel that I love. I'm like, oh yeah, this yeah. is now starts like, fraying. Yeah, you know, a little bit of fraying. Yeah. yeah, I think definitely he had that thought in mind. Yeah, prior to even making them. Yeah, for sure. And it was crazy because then Nike had to do that with other shoes, switching the Nike sign and the, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everybody just had to like take a back seat to him and just say, okay, that's how I'm supposed to design the sneaker or okay, that's how I'm supposed to, you know, utilize. So man, his, yeah. his, his, his wave and his impact, you know what I'm saying? How strong willed he was to just push through, through all of the talk and the conversation. Uh, you know, I, I, I still love his website. Um, uh, where it has its different portals, be it free game or, you know what I'm saying, this, that, and the third, I, I still marvel at it. Um, and, you know, there was, there were so many uh, huge high-end designers that used to try to throw shots at him and sneak this, him, and he would just- All the time. Him. Oh my gosh, bro. I, I, I'm, don't get me mistaken, I could be wrong, but I wanna say it was, uh, was it Raph? Who said something about him? Raph took a jab at him, low key. <laughs> I think it was. He took a jab at him. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. <laughs> but yeah, I guess, uh, you know, at the end of the day, like you said, sometimes in these higher, um, these higher uh, spaces, people can be pretentious and, you know, letting in someone like him, a, a young black man, you know, being the head of, of of Louis, you know, and LVMH being probably the biggest fashion house, you know, yeah, having Chanel under their umbrella and having Dior under their umbrella, and 